Okay, now remember, um, I'm going to have a jump, right? See my jump showing right there? Mm-hmm. Okay, unless I select that piece, so I go to select, make sure that this highlights, go to reshape, and here's my in point, so I move it over to here. And the way that you know is, see that, it's hard to see, but see the diamond right there? Let me zoom in so you can see it. Mm, yes. Okay, see the, well now, now it doesn't show, there's a little diamond. And yeah, I see it. Yeah, there's a little diamond right in there. See? Mm-hmm. So if you move this over here, you know that that's where your end point is, and you'll have a little tiny jump over that nobody will see but you. Okay, now, we, you know, we're still, here's our out point, right? I can even move the out point if I want to over to here. And it's not going to affect the stitching at all. You know, so I end here now. And then you're just going to do a little run and finish up that last little section, right? And on this one, you know, put your, your two points pretty close together. And, you know, then you're just going to kind of follow this shape. Okay, and let me get back to the full screen. Huh, okay, hold on. All right, so there's my full screen. And if I go to colors, right, I can pick that color, this one and this one. I usually pick both of them together and make sure that, you know, I get the right pink. There you go. There's our pink, right? Okay. Okay, now, okay. as you're doing these sections, I'll, it, remind me next week to show you how to automatically set your defaults, right? But we're going to pick a fabric, which is going to, make some settings automatic for us after this. Okay, so there's my, my nice little purse. You know, here's my last stitch. And, you know, I know that I need to have a placement stitch here, right, to do the little flower mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you pretty much know where that flower center is going to go. So, you know, you've got the stitching as a guideline right here. If I wanted to, I could have done the roundabout stitching right here first to make my placement and then started this one, which, you know, now that I think about it, right here, remember? So now that I think about it, I'm going to go mm -hmm. ahead and say, make this green. I'm going to pick green just because it's a different color, right? And we'll start mm -hmm. and make our, our placement line right here. Okay, there's my placement line, and it's now in green, right? Right. This kind of serves two purposes. Mm -hmm. Okay, see? It serves two purposes. Actually, I'm going to shrink that a little bit. So if I select it and I hold the shift key, I can shrink it evenly. See what's going on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I shrank that a little bit. And now the green serves two purposes. First off, I can select the green and I can drag it above the pink. Mm -hmm. And then I can turn it pink. But before I do that, I'm going to duplicate it. Edit and then duplicate. Okay, so here is my placement line. I'll turn it pink. So that's going to stitch absolutely first now, right? And then here is my tack down line. So I'm going to leave it green. Or I can make it yellow so you know it's tack down, whichever you're, you know, just so you know what it's for, right? Right. Now, you know that you don't n actually change the colors of the threads, you know. It's just to make your machine stop. Right. Okay, right. so there we go. So now I have to tack this in place. And this is actually, let me see if I can do this in this program. I can't, different programs do different things. I can. I can go in and I can now take this yellow line, right? my placement line, and I can edit duplicate it. So now that I've got, I'm going to scroll down here. Here's my second line, right? I'm going to change it to okay. pink. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go into my settings, my object details. I'm going to tell it to be a satin line. Right. And we'll make it, 
3, and drop the density down a little bit. Right about there. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now, the hardest part is going to be practicing that satin stitching. Okay, that's going to be the hardest part of it. Because the rest of this makes no difference, right? Now, right. you know, this is what I've got so far. I've got my placement line, my tack down line, the other placement line for the circle, and then it goes immediately into stitching all of this, right? Okay. And then I've got the last placement. The only thing left to finish the applique is going to be the placement line around the outside. So I would take that first line that we did, and I would edit, duplicate. Okay, and what that did, if you look, is it put that down here, right? Okay, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's the line I just created. Go to Object Properties. Tell it that you want it to be a satin line. And let's do 3.5 on the width. I'm going to drop the density down a little bit. And once I say OK, that's converted to a line now, right? If I go back into the object details, then you know what, let's go ahead and let's make this 4.0. We'll make it wider. Okay, so now that's a nice wide line, and I just changed the color. Okay. There's my applique. It's all sealed down, and if I want to get really fancy, um, if I look, here's where I start and stop, right? Yes. Okay, if I zoom in and look how accurate I was, that's pretty accurate. It stopped right, you know, right in a nice even line, right? Because I used the control key on it. Remember? Nice straight line. Yes. Okay, now if I want to get really fancy, I can take this, you know, first line again. Edit, duplicate. Okay, um, let's change it to, you know, a triple run. And let's make this stitch length a little bit longer. I'm going to make it a three millimeter stitch length. And I'm going to turn it pink. And there you go. Or I could leave it black if I just, you know, the black will show some detail too. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I will. I'll just make it black. But that will give that a little, make it almost look like purse-ish. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, when you top, look at a top stitch. Right. It's, and it's going to hold that satin stitch. Because 4.0 is not that wide, but, you know, it will give your satin stitch a little character too. And then the rest of these, it's up to you if you want to do little circles or if you want to put sparkles on. If you do want to do the little circles, come over to this parallel weave tool. And, you know, this makes perfect circles. All you have to do is go like this, you know, select them, drag them into place. Once you get one the size you want, from there you're just going to, you know, control C for copy, control V for paste, and then you're just going to drag them around. Okay. And since these are going to jump, I would just, you know, you could, if you wanted to put them in between here, you could. But what's the difference between whether it jumps from here to here to here versus jumping from here to here? This is probably easier to trim because the jumps are longer than something that would jump from here to here. You know what I mean? Right. So, but, you know, it's up to you. I'll leave it up to you guys what you want to do with those those circles. But, you know, this is going to be a nice little applique on top of an applique. Okay, now the purse handle is something you have to decide. Do you want it to be black like the applique? Or do you want it to be silver? Do you want to try using a little metallic thread with that? You know, that's going to be kind of up to you guys, right? But if you look at this, this is all even, so I'm going to zoom in around the handles, right? See the handles? And if you turn off, like, the visualizer, you can see a little bit better underneath it. 
So the handles here, this is all even. So, you know, go ahead and use like your, your border tool here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and make the handles. We'll make them storm gray. But, you know, this is even and this is not, you know, all you have to do is left click to start, right click to navigate these curves, right? See, I'm right clicking to navigate this curves. Come in and make a point here. And, you know, then you're just going to kind of continue around. And if you want to see what's going on, just, you know, kind of scroll your mouse and just follow dead center on this line. And I'm kind of zoomed in pretty close, but I probably wouldn't zoom in quite that far to do this. See, if I just follow the center of this line, even if I can't see what's going on, it doesn't matter. I'm just following the center of this line. Mm -hmm. And I'm right clicking because it's got a slight curve to it, right? And if I just drag my mouse, then, you know, it's going to let me see what's going on. As I drag down, it's going to continue to go, see? It's kind of jumpy, but when I get to here, I know that I have to do a left click, right? And then I'm going right. to right click around this. And I'm not going to worry if it's on top of that stitching or not. And those points, let's see how those points turned out. Those points turned out pretty good. I might want to adjust them a little bit, but let's go ahead and zoom out. Um, now, those look pretty good, and I look pretty even, right? Yes. And uh, maybe I'll make that gold instead. You could even make it pink if you wanted to. You know, it's going to be up to you. I think uh, maybe I like the gold a little bit better than the silver, but if you did it with the silver metallic or like a pewter metallic, I'll give you some tips on, on stitching with metallic. If you're going to do this with a metallic thread, definitely go into your settings and make this with like 2.25, right? And drop that density down to about 90. And on my underlay, um, this is, I would make this three on that edge run. And personally, you probably could just get away with the center run and make it three on the stitch length. And what that'll do is that'll make that not quite as thick as the satin, or the metallic thread's a little bit heavier, right? Right. And then you're going to drop the tension on your machine. You're going to slow your machine down, and you're going to drop that upper tension because metallic thread... You know, if you leave the tension um, like you would for rayon or polyester thread, it's probably going to pull your bobbin thread to the top and you're going to have more thread breaks. So you're going to want to slow your machine down and drop your upper tension down. But, and if you really wanted to get fancy, you could do something like uh, this. You know, make... Um, like little clasps up here. Or make them round. Either one. I guess if you made them round, you'd have to kind of go like this with your right clicks here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just make something off to the side so that it takes that little point out of the way. Okay. See the clasps? Mm hmm So if you made them round, you know, personally I'd do one so they were the same. And then copy it and use your mirror tool and move it over to here. so clever. <laughs> Although these, I don't know, I didn't center those very well. <laughs> Let me get rid of these. <laughs> so, oh, hold on, I'm going to undo and just get rid of this piece. There we go. You know, so something like that, just, you know, do whatever you want with these, like, you know, a little bit of character, right? Mm hmm And do you guys have any questions? 
Um, I got no. one. I got okay. one. Okay. Uh, if I can think of it. You change the density mm -hmm. when you, I can't remember what you was doing. Oh, the density on, stretchy, on, on the stretchiness or something. Right. Here's what's going on. We're going to actually change our settings anyway on this. But um, when I go in to, like this, it's a satin line, right? I changed my right. width, you know, so that, and I can use the arrows, but it's just as easy to come in here and just punch the numbers in, right? This is my density. See, see the number as I slide it, it's telling me a number. So I uh -huh. know I'm at 117, you know, 100% density. You know, I took it down to about, I think, 90, 85 to 90 is a good range, okay? Um, okay. Underlay, that's going to be, you know, like when you do, you know, when you, you know, the stitching that goes down first before the top stitching, that's underlay, right? Right. Well, this isn't very wide, so I'm thinking, you know, if we're going to do metallic especially, I would just use a center run. So that's going to just stitch a line in, in the middle, right? Okay. If I were doing regular thread, I'd probably, center run or edge run would be fine. But what I did when I changed this, you know, even if I left it edge run, I told you to change the stitch length of that, the underlay, to uh -huh. 3, 3.0. Right. Okay. Stretchiness is your compensation. So um, if this is not checked, there's no compensation. Okay. Okay. When this is checked, you know, this is the standard um, compensation 0 0.20. You can okay. select from, 50, you know, 0.15 or 0.3. You can also manually change this. Like my favorite setting is actually 0.25. Okay. But, you know, that, that has used, I use rayon thread. Um, you know, it depends on the brand of thread you're using, too. You know, 0.25 to be seems, it, it works for me, um, my machine, with the thread I use. Okay. Okay. So that's your underlay. And then once you say okay, then all those settings are applied. All right. Okay, now. We did not make too many changes to these, right? So let's look at what our settings are right now. Like our underlay, you know, double check that you have underlay. Like this, I have edge run and weave because that's pretty wide there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would, you know, you can leave these alone if you want. It's up to you. You know, that 2.0 stitch length, I usually change mine to 3. But, you know, that's up to you what you want. Okay, so just so I want you to note these these settings, and then on my stretchiness, I'm at point two. That's the default stretchiness, right? So I'm going to say right. okay. Now, what else mm -hmm. I can do if I know that I'm going to stitch this design on a knit, for example, I can go into setup, and I can say, you know, choose my fabric, and it's going to say, okay, right now I'm set for pure cotton, but, you know, maybe I'm stitching on, you know, fleece or linen or a microfiber or rayon or silk or a stretch knit or stretch terry toweling, right? Yeah. In this case, I'm going to say mm -hmm. I'm, I'm stitching on a stretch knit. And you can pick whatever fabric you're using, but, you know, I just want you to see what happens, right? Once I say okay, see my stitch count down here, 17,671 stitches, right? Uh-huh. Once I say okay, mm -hmm. see my stitch count changed? It's now 17,000. Yeah. Because this adjusted my settings for the fabric I selected. Now when I look at this, there's my density, right? Here's my underlay. Right. See what it did? Mm -hmm. It changed my stitch length to four. It changed the stitch length or the underlay to a weave only. And, you know, then on my stretchiness, it left the stretchiness alone, but it changed my settings for this design based on the fabric I told it I would be stitching on. 
Okay. Okay. So that's okay. a quick way to get some standard settings. Now something else to look at, when you go to choose a fabric, right, and I, if I say stretch knit, look what it's telling mm -hmm. me for, you know, re required stabilizer. When it's saying required, that means bare minimum, right? Topping, there's nothing here. Uh -huh. Backing, cutaway times two. And it's telling you that it recommends that you use a cutaway backing in two layers. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's giving mm -hmm. you recommendations. Right. And a lot of times, like we think in terms of backing as, oh, well, we've got this design and it's this big, I should use this, right? Or I've got this design and I should use this. And mm -hmm. we're basing it more on the type of the design and possibly the fabric that we're stitching on rather than the total number of stitches in a design. Um, different types of backings support X number of stitches, like a, you know, a cutaway backing or a tearaway backing may support 3,000 stitches. So if you have a design that has 6,000 stitches, you would need bare minimum two to three layers of tearaway, right? Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, or if you have a, a design like this that's 17,000 stitches on a, a medium um, cutaway, you know, it's only going to support maybe 10,000 stitches. So it's telling you, you probably need a couple layers here. Plus, you've got to stretch knit. Now, if for example, for stretch knits, what you could do is iron on like a no-show mesh first and then use one layer of cutaway mm -hmm. to stabilize the area. And that would be considered two layers. Okay. So when you're picking your fabric, you know, you can, you know, pay attention to what these are saying. These, these are good places to start, right? Like I'm using polyester now. It says backing, tear away times two. Microfiber, tear away. You know, uh, lycra, cut away times two, right? Okay. Corduroy or velvet, tear away and a solvent film on top. You know, so it's giving you some pointers on here. Okay, should you check, should you? Bernie, what's the? Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Should you set your fabric first? Um, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. You can set it after. You know, okay. so if, if you set it first, you know, great. If not, you know, whatever your habit is, stay, you know, try to stay in the same habit so you remember to set it, right? Right. And, you know, but it doesn't matter. Even if, uh -huh. you know, even if you forget and do it at the very end, it's going to apply all those settings to your design. Okay. Okay, now, something else to look at. Oh, sorry, Bar uh, Barbara, you had a question too, right? Yeah, I just have a question on stabilizer. What's the maximum number of sheets of stabilizer or layers of stabilizer would you use? Say you had a design that was 45, 50,000 stitches. Well, some of those stabilizers, you'd end up with 15, 15 layers of stabilizer. Right, right. When I have, like, a design that has a lot of stitches like that, um, it depends on the fabric you're using, too. Uh -huh. But I like to use multiple layers, like two to three layers on a big design like that, of no-show mesh. Uh -huh. Because no-show mesh is going to give me the okay. stabilizing I need. Or at least two layers of no-show mesh and then, you know, a cutaway or something, right? Um, you know, or fusible no-show mesh if it's, you know, if the fabric's got some give to it. But the goal is to keep the okay. fabric stable without making it so rigid. Because you're right, I mean, you could put, have you ever seen um, a, a, uh -huh. a sweatshirt or something that comes from, you know, like an embroidery house, right? And... It, the front of it's like a billboard. It's so yeah. rigid. That's because they wanted to make sure nothing moved, uh -huh. and they put a heavy cutaway behind it. 
and you can see the results. It's you know there's not a nice hand to it, right? It's it's rigid. It stands out. You know, no amount of washing softens it up. You know what I mean? So no show mesh. When you have mm -hmm. a large design like that, no show mesh is nice because it supports stitches, but it's lightweight. Now something else to think about. Even though like not you know backing is not woven generally right but something else to think about is right everything if you pull on that backing from corner to corner you'll see there's a little bit of stretch right so if you put one layer uh -huh. going up and down and then you put another layer of that no show mesh going you know side to side right turn it 45 degrees or 90 degrees then, you know, you have got a little more right. stabilization there. Okay. Okay. And, um, I gotcha. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's, you know, I, I like no-show mesh. It's a little more expensive, but, you know, it, it, you can layer that without having this ridiculous amount of bulk. And I really, unless I'm doing something like, you know, that I don't care if it looks like a billboard. I almost never use heavy cutaway. I almost never use heavy tearaway. I'm I'm generally in the medium to light range. But like on a light tearaway, you can layer three layers of that without a problem. A medium tearaway, right. three layers would get too hefty. Okay, so something okay. else to look at that I want you guys to look at. Um, is I want you to go into setup, right? And we're talking about your fabric, and there's this option mm -hmm. called manage fabrics. Okay, in the manage fabrics, you know, I can click on denim, right? Or fleecy. I'm looking to see mm -hmm. if it'll let me en edit any of those. Won't let me edit any of these, but I can also say new. And, you know, maybe you find that. For a design like this, you have to stabilize one way, but a smaller design, you can stabilize a little bit less. So you would put in here, you know, um, small design, cotton or something, right? And then you would say, okay, um, based on pure cotton, and then you would say, okay. And... You know, then you would change your settings, but look what you can do. You can come in here and you can change your stitch length. You can change, you know, your stitch density, your underlay type. You can come in and set, you know, for a wide satin, for a narrow satin, for lettering. And then you can come in here and you can tell it what, you know, backing you used. So if I say I used, you know... No show mesh, two layers. I guess it would help if I didn't have my caps lock on, huh? <laughs> okay. So now all I have to do is say okay. And I've got this new custom setting I did. So if I come up here and I say, you know, set up, choose my fabric, well, custom pure cotton, there you go. And that'll change the settings to what, you know, what I decided, right? Okay. Okay, now, we are still too big for our hoop on this design. If we really look at this, I'm going to zoom out a little bit further. I'm kind of extending beyond my 200 by 200 hoop, right? So I need to resize this, and I want to do it all okay. at one time. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to say Edit, Select All. And so that everything stays together, I'm going to come back up here and say edit group. And then I can either hold the shift key and drag it slowly so that it's all inside the hoop. Or I could go into dimensions and just have it entered. But, you know, either way, whatever, whatever you prefer. So there's my design. It's now well within my hoop. I have a little wiggle room in case I need to, you know, adjust, right? Like in, if I have to move the, the needle position around. And I'm good to go. Bernie, what did you do after you edit and select group? Oh, edit. I went edit, select all. Right? Uh-huh. Okay, so I went edit, select all. Okay. And then I went edit and then group. Okay. Group. Okay. 
And then what I did to resize it is everything's selected. See how everything is now selected over here? Uh -huh. Which means that if I change the color, it changes mm -hmm. the color on everything. So bear that in mind, right? Okay. I have to ungroup if I need to edit. Mm -hmm. But what I did was I held my shift key down and I dragged and I watched the outline to make sure that it went inside of the hoop. See where my outline is? Okay. And if, see the size okay. showing? It's showing me that my Y height is 195 by 87. And so I know that that's going to fit within my hoop, right? Okay. Right. Uh, Shift key, you hold down shift key and you take a corner. Right. And it'll, Square. what it does is it takes it, if I didn't hold the shift key, I'd have to adjust it like this and then come down here and adjust it like that, right? Right. Holding the shift key means that everything scales from the center. So I'm moving towards the center or I'm moving out from the center if I make it larger. Okay, so it all scales okay. evenly from the center. So what I get is it in the hoop, and I can see what's going on. Okay. Okay. So and then that is really cute. Yeah, it's a fun little design. But now you guys know how to write to your cards, right? Or send to the machine, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's right. so. And always save your Jan file so you can come in and edit later. But when you come in here, like when I click on this now, because it's all selected, you know, it's all grouped, uh -huh. see how all these mm -hmm. blue boxes show up? Yes. That tells me it's grouped. And if I change uh -huh. one thing, like the color, it all changes. So I don't, you know, if I need to edit again, I have to come up here and I have to say edit ungroup. Group. And then I can get to okay. each piece. Okay. Okay. And I have a I have a question. Uh -huh. You still got the image up there. When you save it, do you take out the image or do you leave the image there? If you leave it in a Jan file, you can leave the image in. It won't hurt anything. But okay. if you want, see my image over here. Even in my object, see my image right here. I can yeah. select it and press delete. Uh huh and get rid of it. Okay. If it bothers you, you can, you can get rid of it. Well, so. that way you can kind of see what you've really got and not, mm -hmm. you know, you can not also, um, you can also hide, the the, hide the image. See your little sunglasses? I refer to these as the rose-colored glasses because it makes it look 3D, right? You can uh -huh. click on this uh -huh. to hide your image. Okay. So you can see what's oh, going on. Okay. And okay. that way, if you need to come in and edit, the image is still there. Okay. Like, for example, if I look down here, which one okay. thing we didn't cover is I'm going to hit B and zoom, right? Okay, see right here, I need to edit a little bit. Uh -huh. Okay, if I left click on this piece, uh -huh. I select it, and then I go to reshape. And, you know, the, remember I told you if you right click on the outline, you can curve things. Uh -huh. It's the same thing for satin stitching. If I right-click on the line, I can put new points in, right? Let me undo that. Right here, if I right-click, right. Okay. it makes a nice curved point, and I can uh -huh. adjust it, and I can move both sides. Okay? Oops. Okay. Uh -huh. And, you know, same thing here. I can also just drag a point that's already there and reshape something. Okay. Okay. Like down, like if I, I always, I always end up grabbing an angle line. Yeah, this will adjust how you know the direction of your stitches. And when you do that, zoom in real mm -hmm. close. Because if I were at like a hundred percent, right, like this, I'd have a heck of a uh -huh. time grabbing those things. You know, hit yeah. B and zoom in, and then you have a little more control, right? Makes it a little bit easier to get to those lines. Yeah. Okay, now, like something over here, if I want to select this line over here, when I'm in this mode, you know, it doesn't always let me pick something else, right? So, you know, if you want to select that line, mm -hmm. like I can see it here in my sequence, sequence viewer, maybe. No, I guess that's the other one. Oh, there it is. It's right here, right? I have to kind of go into select again mm -hmm. to get over to reshape it. But, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, I could use a little work too, right? 
And, you know, it's just a matter of pulling those little, you know, beads around. And if you don't like, like, the, sh the direction, then, you, you know, you can drag the beads, or you can come out here and you can grab this angle line. See how I changed that? Okay. So if you need to adjust, like, the outline, you're going to grab the little beads. If you need to ad adjust the stitch direction, you can grab those little angle lines. Like, I, I would probably adjust this a little bit, you know. And so, yeah. you know, the reshape is going to be your mm -hmm. edit tool. It's going to let you get to the nodes and your in and out points. And it looks really funky on the screen when you're zooming I really out. like that tool. <laughs> yeah, I, the t it's great because it's real easy to delete things, to add things, to, you know, move things around. And, um, you know, it's just, I, I, it's one of the easiest programs to edit to design that, that I've worked in, to be honest. So, you guys have any more questions? Now, the I'm flower, good. the flower, I would not start with the flower. Start with this purse, okay? Okay. And then, mm -hmm. once you get comfortable with the purse, then, you know, the flower, I wouldn't even worry about the green leaves unless you really are ambitious, right? But then the flower is a little bit easier, <laughs> right? But, you know, start start with the purse. The purse is a little, the purse is a little more fun than the flower to start with, but it's also a little less intimidating. And, by the way, if you're going to put in, like, these little, these little um, things here, you uh -huh. can either just go by the image and put them in randomly, but if you really want to be ambitious, you could make, uh, you know, you could actually do like running line little marks here to glue on if you want. But I probably would just look at the picture and say, yeah, it looks good here. <laughs> yeah. Now, we're supposed to work on these mm -hmm. and make a copy and send it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you go, if mm -hmm. you log in, where you log in and get the videos, uh -huh. that first page is a form. Since the form is driving me crazy, I would I would still use it because at least then it stores them in case, you know, something goes wrong with the email. Okay. But you can also attach that Jan file to the email and send it to me. It's a small file. Or, you know, the yeah. Jeff file if you want. The Jan file is a little bit easier because I can kind of look and see what's going on. The Jeff file is stitch format, so I can't really see what your settings were. Okay. So. You could do candle wicking on those things, too, couldn't you? You could. You've got French knots in here. Um, or you could make, you guys are all yeah. good at making motifs now, right? Motif. Yeah, remember the motifs, like yeah. we do with the lines? But I think we've got uh -huh. motif 39 is a French knot. Okay? Yeah. So what you could do, let me undo that. I'm going to turn those to blue because that doesn't show up very well. You could use the French knots and go into, you know, the motifs, right? And select motif 39. Mm -hmm. And you could just go like this. A little bit off on that one. But each one of these little things is now an individual design. You just click where you want them. Yep, and hit escape when you're done. And let me go in and turn They kind of look like crystals. Uh-huh. I said they kind of look like crystals. They do. They do a little bit. You can make them smaller, too, and make them a little more compact. But if you're going to do that, I probably would just go ahead and do mm -hmm. either the, like, a make your own French knot, or let me zoom in on these, because these are kind of sparse. Mm -hmm. To me, these are sparse, um, compared yeah. to, to the French knot line. Like, the French knot line does French knots completely differently. See? I like those French knots. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so but I would... Take a motif and make a motif out of you could, one you of could. those, couldn't you? Um, you Not one of these. They would be pretty tough. 
but you could take this one and either make your own motif or you could shrink this mm -hmm. one down a little bit. Or, you know, since you want it kind of maybe this mm -hmm. size, what you could do is, you know, copy and paste them as you put them in and rotate it to make it a little bit heavier. And, if yeah. you know, you know, if you second left click on that, then you can rotate it how you want, right? Mm hmm And let's zoom out. Uh, I'll probably rotate that a little bit more. Let me zoom out so you can see what that one looks like now. Or, you know, you could just make circles, but that'll make a little heavier one, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Make a little heavier one. But then at the same time, let me undo that and get rid of these. You could also, you know, just make the circles, which depends on what, you know, what look you want. Like, you know, the circles are real simple, too. It's just one circle, and then you're just duplicating that. How would you make a circle that's just a little outline of a circle for, like, a placement for a crystal? Um, you could, I don't think you can automatically outline these. Let me look and see if you can. I don't think you can. There's no, like, circle line, I don't believe. Nope. But, you know, you could, no. at this point, you'd have to know, like, the size of your crystal, right? Because you wouldn't want that to show up. I probably would just come in and use a running right. line and just say right click, right click, you know, make sure you right click so that you get the circle. Uh -huh. You only have to do it once, right? And then it's just copy and paste. Right. You know, so because at that point you're just, you know, control C, control V and dragging it into a new position. I got to zoom in to get that. Oops. And that would be your markers. Okay. So, although this one's so simple, this is And then design, that would just be a jump. Yeah, you just have jumps. But this design's truly, you know, like, it's not a real complicated crystal design. You know what I mean? You could actually look on the screen basically and say oh yeah it needs to go here here and here right yeah um, you know because it's kind of a little bit of a random pattern and stuff so, so but that's how you would you would make your generally like when you're doing a crystal design you're incorporating a specific mm -hmm. size circle into um you know like into the design like i'm trying to I used to have the list. I'm sure I still have it somewhere. But when I did, I did a couple of sets of crystal designs, and I had a specific size circle for each different size um, crystal. So if you knew, like, if you did those circles, right, and you knew that you're, I'm going to kind of just, now nah, we'll get rid of that one. If you knew that, like, your, your crystal was, um, you know, like three millimeters, I would go into dimensions and I would say, you know, 2.75 millimeters, right? And, you know, the same thing down here. And then you've got that circle designed at the size of your crystal. A little bit smaller than the crystal so it hides it, right? Right. So, right. Or, if you wanted to get really fancy... You could turn this into um, a motif. You could make it a motif. You could, actually. Or you could, you know, also come in and say, you know what, let's make this a uh, satin line, one millimeter, drop my density down a little bit. And you could set the crystal inside you know, satin stitching, too, which would give it a little more highlight, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And so, so, like, maybe you want to use white <sighs> white crystals in this instead of pink. Mm-hmm. So you could make this the pink, mm -hmm. and then that white crystal would show, you know, inside there. Or black. They actually make black ones now, too. Mm -hmm. 
So you can do all kinds of different things. Okay. So, but, well, you guys have any more questions? Uh, I, I think, think I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm good, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're going to practice the satin stitching, right? That looks like it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's a it's a cute yeah. little design. It's yes. real quick. It's, you know, it, it's not a real stressor, but practice with this tool. And, you know, this tool will let you do a couple of nifty little things. But, you know, like if I start here, right, and I want to cross, mm -hmm. it'll let me cross. See? Mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know, if you're that, a lot of programs won't let you do this, which is nice on some level, but sometimes, you know, you want to do something like, I'm trying to remember how we did this. It's been a long time. You want to cross over your outline. I usually end up, I end up crossing when I don't need to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, well, some of the programs won't let you do it now. <laughs> they'll they'll automatically test it for you. I'm trying to remember how we did this. But when we made an N, that's what, what it was. We actually crossed way back in the day, right? When you were making your letters, uh -huh. you would cross to make your Ns. Uh -huh. And it'll let you do it. It'll stitch that. It's going to be double, right? But it'll let you do it, which... On something like this can be kind of fun. Um, like, for example, you know, maybe you're doing something like this. Let me bow this out a little bit. Whoops. Probably put too many points in there, but... Okay, and what happens is the program adjusts so that you don't have super heavy stitching on that point. Okay? Okay. But on the hmm. end, yep. I actually have it doesn't it doesn't take stitches out. So I'm literally stitching on top of myself. But here. you could could you take your stitches out yourself? Uh no. Not really. Not. I, I'd have to do it after, like, it turned into that, stitch data, and it would be, you know, I'd, I'm better off going into Easy Edit to do that. Like yeah, Easy, okay. Easy Edit will We'll learn me, that in June. Yeah, <laughs> Easy Edit lets you tear a design apart stitch by stitch or section by section. It's actually pretty neat. But, you know, that would be, that would be yeah. so much editing. Like, I couldn't do it in the outline form because it's, you know, just not going to let me remove stitches underneath. It's it's all outline. I could do it in stitch mm -hmm. form. It would just be a real treat. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, well, ladies, I'll send, this should be uploaded by tomorrow with the images. And, um, you know, so don't, okay. don't worry about that flower right now. You know, that's, you know, we have a, a month to basically okay. get through all the applique, right? Okay. So don't worry about the flower, you know, practice this, because this is easy, and it's, it, you know, it, it takes a little thought, you know, process to go through. You have some options, you get a little creative if you want, you know, and, but it's an easy enough design that it's not going to stress you out, right? Okay. <laughs> you don't sound very positive there. <laughs> So, but, you know, practice this and, you know, there's no, like, you don't have to have this done by next week. You know, if you have questions, then, you know, send me the design and, and you know, we'll go through your questions in the webinar, okay? And, um, you know, but, okay, you know, play with it, get comfortable. And if you find you're getting frustrated, just, you know, get up and walk away from it for a little while. Don't, don't frustrate yourself over something because then you just don't learn anything. Right, that's what I do. I just get up and wave. <laughs> yeah, and and you should, you know, get up and stretch. And, <laughs> you know, I, I go and I clean the house or sort through something because that's kind of, you know, mindless work, right? And, you know, then, it, you know, like your uh -huh. mind is processing even if you don't realize it, and then you'll get one of those little light bulb moments, right? 
Yeah. So, oh, I yeah. said that. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, wait, that. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> so, but, well, ladies, <laughs> you have a very good night. And okay. I'm going to, you know, um, you go. You too. We'll see. I'm sorry? I said we'll see you Monday. Oh, yeah, you'll be back. Oh, yeah, you're, you're both here on Monday. Monday. Yeah, you're both here yes. on Monday. So, <laughs> yeah, if, I'm trying to think. Uh, okay. Lee, Lee's in there and Judy, that's right. So I, I, could, I could torture you all with homework and say, oh, you know that applique design? We're going to put that into uh, our quilt because we can actually do that in the program. <laughs> So no pressure or anything, oh, right? Goody. <laughs> so. I'm so glad there's no pressure. <laughs> well, ladies, you guys, you have a good night. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have to think about that, right. about putting applique into one of the quilt ones, because everybody that's in the EQ webinar is also in the digitizing webinar, except Lee. But Lee, Lee actually did the digitizer seminar a couple of years ago. So I'm wondering how torturous that would be for her. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's been a couple of years ago, it could be pretty torturous. She needs a refresher, right? <laughs> yeah, if she hasn't used it. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to tell her. I'll Absolutely. Say, I'll, I'll say everybody voted and we volunteered you for this. So <laughs>